Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. We recently got a question uh, about the number of anchors that Iowa-class battleships have. Uh, are they supposed to have three? And like everything else, I don't have a short answer for this one. Uh, the, the answer is yes and no. So this question is coming from one of two places, I suspect. Earlier American battleships, like pre-treaty battleships, always had three anchors. They usually had uh, two on one side and one on the other. And they also would have had uh, usually three capstans to go along with that. So uh, ships like Arizona, if you've ever built the, that ubiquitous Ravel model of her, has three anchors at the bow. That, that was just common. And it seems like two of them were normally used and one of them was a backup. The other place where it may come from is German battleships. These have three anchors with two at the bow and one at the stern. So uh, everybody's made that ubiquitous model of Bismarck with the stern anchor. And uh, so they assume that American battleships must have that as well. And uh, the short answer is Iowa-class battleships were only ever built with two anchors, one each port and starboard at the bow. They were never designed to have a stern anchor. They were never to ha designed to have a third hull's pipe and caps and everything else for a third bow anchor. However, they were originally designed to have a third bow anchor. Right where I am standing, original blueprints for Iowa and New Jersey show that there would have been actually a recess in this deck. Uh, it seems like it was about two feet deep, uh, roughly about this big, maybe two curators long and a curator wide. Uh, you, you can see this scan of a plan that shows what it would have looked like. And that, it was complicated. It had uh, a swinging bulwark here that would have kept spray out but could have folded out so you could just push the anchor over the side. Uh, presumably you have lost one of your anchors, you've had to slip it or something, and so you're taking the chain from that existing anchor and putting it on this spare and using it in that way. Or it's just sitting on deck so that it could be craned in place if you need it while you're forward deployed in some port. It's not entirely clear. It doesn't look all that usable. And so it is deleted relatively uh, late in the design process of these ships. In March 1942, with the Iowa-class battleships very close to being launched, at least Iowa and New Jersey, and about a year away from being commissioned, the Navy holds a conference to discuss how they can simplify the Iowa-class designs in order to commission them quicker. Of course, March of 1942, very shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, by this time, the battleships that were easily repairable have been repaired. And so now the Navy has gone from designing the repairs for that into, well, all right, now we've got to fight the war effort and, and look at uh, what the next generation is going to be. So they come up with a list of 49 different modifications that they can make to simplify the designs of these ships. Remember, the Iowa-class battleships were not wartime designs. They are gold-plated interwar designs that feature all the bells and whistles. So it's really interesting the things that the Navy is looking at, which is relatively late in the design process for Iowa and New Jersey, about mid-design process for Missouri and Wisconsin, and really early on for Illinois and Kentucky, uh, that, that they're starting to think about, well, how can we reduce this? So. This list of changes comes from an article in Warships International, uh, specifically volume number 57, uh, issue one from March 2020. Uh, th this is a uh, publication that you have to subscribe to or pay to get. Uh, so we're not gonna put the full list on here or the full article like we normally do, uh, but we will put a link on there for the JSTOR uh, link to the article. And uh, if you have a JSTOR account or you want to get a JSTOR account, you can go there. Uh, or you can just look up the March 2020 uh, issue number one and uh, acquire it there. Yeah, so there's a link down below so that you can get a copy if you want to read the full list. We're only going to cover a couple of things. So first off, we, they hold this conference. There's 49 objects. 
Uh, of those 49 objects, one thing the Navy says, that's amazing, do that, and then do this extra thing along with it. 37 of the 49 things they say, uh, that's great, just do it however you, you had in mind. Two of them they said, no, we're not gonna do that. Seven of them they said, yeah, you can do part of that, but not the whole thing. And two of them they said, well, we've got to discuss this further. We'll hold future conferences down the road. Uh, for example, what is the final radar suite of these ships going to be? We have to figure that out to finish designing the masts and the combat information center and things like that. And so the Navy said in March, uh, we'll, we'll discuss this later. They finally get around to discussing it in October. Uh, so the two things that they say that they're not going to do that were on this list, eliminate curtains for portholes and reduce the amount of equipment in the print shop. Uh, the, the porthole curtains is interesting because the Navy, another one of these points is to reduce the number of portholes total. So they're saying, yes, you can reduce the number of portholes, but the portholes need to have curtains, which is interesting because they're all battle ports. They've got a, a metal covering that closes um, if you need a sunscreen. So that, that, that's a really interesting thing. What kinds of spaces have portholes? The enlisted spaces below decks have had theirs deleted. It's the officer spaces in the superstructure. The officers are used to a certain way of life, which apparently includes curtains for their little round windows. Print shop equipment is super interesting because the Iowa class battleships were designed to be fleet flagships. And so having uh, that printing equipment on board for those sorts of situations makes sense. Uh, and, and so it makes sense that the Navy said, no, 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 don't, don't reduce that. that. That goes part and parcel with the flag spaces of the ships. It's also worth pointing out that while they say that uh, they want to delete these things initially while the ship is under construction, many of the things also leave room that after the war or during a future major yard period when she's already sitting around doing nothing, that they will go back and add these things in. So uh, some of the ones I thought were super interesting Eliminate doors in way of staterooms, or if retained, eliminate the curtains. So originally, doors were going to have both a joiner door that opens and closes and a curtain. Uh, so the Navy says, get rid of the doors. If we've already installed it, because some of these ships are nearly complete, just don't put a curtain in there. And this is one where we can see that New Jersey has since had many joiner doors added. So we know that. Uh, she either was far enough along in construction that many of these doors were already there, or they come back later and they uh, add them back in, like we said, happens. Uh, here's a fun one. Reduce the number of engraved label plates on the ship and replace by stenciling or getting embossed plates. So oftentimes every compartment would have an engraved plate on it that says uh, what the compartment number is, sometimes also what the name of that compartment is. Uh, so they're replacing it primarily with stenciling on this ship, which makes it all the more interesting when we find some of those original brass uh, engraved label plates on some of these doors. Uh, we've previously, I'm pretty sure, done a video on these uh, where we've talked about there, there are some printed aluminum ones that are probably from Vietnam and some similar ones that are from the 80s, but a handful, just a very small number of these brass plates uh, that, that we think date back to World War II. The next interesting thing is point number 20, conservation of aluminum and corrosion resistant steel. Uh, so this one is one of the longer ones and it actually breaks out for BB-61 and 62 that are already partially done, do this, for the other ones, do that. Uh, but essentially, they're getting rid of aluminum, which was included in the original design to save weight because of the treaty mandated uh, 45,000 ton limit. And since that limit is no longer there anymore, they're saving the aluminum for other parts of the war effort, and they're deleting a dissimilar metal and basically replacing it all with uh, mild steel. Uh, it looks like for the aluminum that covers insulation piping, they're gonna be adding an extra 40 tons. And for the substitution of steel for the magazine spaces, they're adding an extra 75 tons. So again, you can see how they've uh, been trying to cut every little weight possible uh, to meet those treaty standards. And as soon as the treaties go out the window, they're like, nope, no, nope, just use mild steel. We got plenty of it already. Uh, point number 25, eliminate the spare anchor. You can see they obviously did that. 
Oh, point number 38 is cool. Uh, it calls for the elimination of the aircraft cranes that were mounted in the superstructure. Originally, the ships were supposed to have boat stowage between the funnels on the superstructure, which is very common in earlier American battleships, but it gets replaced by that three-tiered 40 millimeter tower. Those booms were also gonna be used to uh, help with the aircraft as well as the boats. And they're saying, well, we've still got the aviation crane on the stern, get rid of the ones in the superstructure, and that saves weight and makes room for extra anti-aircraft guns. <laughs> My favorite one on the whole list, point number 39, Omit the ladies' retiring room. Iowa-class battleships during World War II have a crew of up to 2,700 men and zero women. And yet, there is a ladies' powder room forward of the wardroom and a ladies' retiring room on the starboard side main deck about amidships where the uh, boats are in the original designs. Uh, and interestingly, even though it's omitted here, it is brought back uh, during the 50s and 60s and not finally deleted until the 80s when it gets converted into a nuclear uh, washdown closet in case any of the crew get contaminated with nuclear waste. Why did they do this? Flagship. She's going to be hosting parties. Uh, so the ship was built with female bathrooms even though there were no female crew members ever expected to be on board. And finally, this one is the bane of my existence. It does not appear like they went back and redid this uh, point number 43, substitute built-up welded steel drainage wells uh, for composition and deck drains on all bridges, platforms, etc. above the weather decks. Use thin wall steel tubing for drain piping in lieu of brass or copper. Terminate drains above the weather deck in lieu of extending uh, to scupper discharge. So essentially what this means is instead of having the drains in the superstructure plumb all the way down, to tie into plain drains in the hall, they just drain down and come out on the deck, which means that we get ice on the deck in the winter and it causes further corrosion. Also, they're using thin walled, mild steel pipes instead of brass or copper, which means that those pipes are corroding. The flooding that Iowa class battleships get today is from deck drains rotting out and dumping rainwater into the ship, not from seawater entering the hall. So this is one of those changes where you can see definitely a wartime modification and not gold plating. And I absolutely hate that they made that change and didn't go back and, and fix it later. But these ships were designed to have a limited service life and, and we have definitely exceeded that. So what are some design changes you would have made to make these ships easier to construct? Let us know in the comment section down below uh, if you thought that one of the ones on this list was pretty vital or if you would have done something different. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel. Thanks for watching.